But we've also got something a little bit different for you in this last hour of the show. As the sky turns blue and as the weekend starts to get hotter and hotter and hotter, we're going to speak to Ruth Warrender, award-winning journalist at the Scottish Sun. She's got a podcast out uh, about true crime. And I know an awful lot of you out there listen uh, and watch really, really interesting shows about true crime. Uh, she's done an investigation into a particular murder uh, of a woman in Aberdeen, uh, which is a fascinating story. Let's talk to Ruth now uh, and find out what it's all about. Ruth, a very good uh, afternoon. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Good afternoon, Mike. Thanks Pleasure for, to be on. Thanks Thank you for, for having us. Yeah, thanks very much for joining us. It's a fascinating story. I mean, I, I did some a time up in Scotland. I worked up there for, for sort of nearly 10 years, but I didn't know about Brenda Page, um, who was a woman from Aberdeen. Tell us a little bit about her story before we do anything else. Well, Brenda was actually from Ipswich, but she'd moved up to Aberdeen um, to... Um, for her job. She was a very talented scientist and she headed up the genetics department at the University of Aberdeen. So she moved up in 1973. And um, basically in this in this podcast, I investigate her brutal murder. Um, her death remained unsolved for 45 years and it became one of Britain's longest running unsolved murder cases. Uh, at the time of her death, Brenda was 32 years old. Um, as I said, she was an absolute talent. Um, she was a brilliant geneticist. And um, on the day her the day before her body was found on the 14th of July, 1978, it started off as a normal day for her. Uh, she went to work at the university. She left the laboratory. And later that evening, she went out for dinner with two businessmen in a very upmarket hotel in the city, which at the time, uh, was in the throes of the oil industry. It was a, you know, the, the oil boom. Um, it had to actually become the oil capital of Europe by then. Um, and she was spotted leaving the hotel at about 2.30 in the morning. She drove herself home. And little did she know when she was turning the key in her door that her killer was actually already waiting inside, ready to pounce. Right. Um, Brenda was subjected to a brutal and violent and very sustained attack and uh, her murderer used a blunt instrument, which has never, ever been found to this day. So a huge police investigation followed. But unfortunately, you know, her family were so devastated at this. The case was actually closed after only two years. Um, and despite a reopening of the cold case in 2015, um, you know, no development had been known about any arrest or anything when I started my investigation in 2018. So, um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it's haunted um, the folk of Aberdeen. I'm from Aberdeen. I, I grew up knowing about this case. Um, and it really did cast a long, dark shadow over the city. Um, and it's only recently that her killer has actually been convicted. Mm. And that person is now behind bars. Right. And, I mean, one of the fascinating uh, differences, I suppose, about this case was the kind of double life that she led. Because, yes, she was a brilliant scientist and she seemed to be a very successful professional woman but she worked part-time as an escort. She was a very, very well-respected um, scientist and, you know, everyone that loved her, just, you know, she was a wonderful human being. Um, but police, days after her murder investigation was launched, they did reveal that she did have a second occupation um, and that she felt the need, although she had a flourishing career and a brilliant job at the university, she felt the need to have a second income um so you know we do explore that theory and whether that that did put her life at risk mm. i think it did taint the investigation and possibly hinder the police investigation because it just tainted with you know the sexist attitudes in 1970s um it, people it just changed people's opinions on her and the case yeah. in general yes um, we, yeah because we we've we've spoken on this show before about the investigation of the Yorkshire Ripper and one of the reasons why it took so long to catch the Yorkshire Ripper was the police's view of prostitutes was well you know they're just prostitutes and you know if that's what they're doing then you know if they get killed that's kind of part of the risk of the job and presumably that was partly what fueled maybe the police's investigation in Aberdeen. Yeah and you know I really go I really dig deep into this theory and notion that it had anything to do with her murder at the end of the day, you know, listeners will have to listen to Murder in the Granite City to find out, but um, it, it perhaps wasn't 
like what you're describing mm. um back then you know Aberdeen was in the throes of the oil boom and there was lots of people around the world that were coming to Aberdeen to work it was a billion pound industry a very exciting time to be there and you know Brenda did need the second income um but maybe it wasn't you know it's not maybe what it seems mm. um and, and I think I it was a lot more innocent Yes. And there's also a, there's also a suggestion that the kinds of work that she was doing as a as a scientist could have been putting her life in possibly in danger as well. Why would that have been? So, yeah, in this podcast, I explored the three theories that were surrounding her death. Obviously, it remained unsolved for so long. So this is what the most talked about theories um, that were kind of doing the rounds. So the second theory I look into is that she was researching uh, the safety standards of, of the North Sea. Mm. Um, now, you know, did people at the top, uh, were they terrified that this scientist was going to come along and throw a spanner in the works and, you know, unveil something that might have put the whole on, all oil industry to a halt? Um, who knows? Uh, but we also look into that. Now, the third theory I also explore is her complicated love life. Mm. Um, at the time of her death, Brenda was single, she had been divorced for six months. She was living in a flat on her own and she was back in the dating scene. Uh, she had a very complicated relationship with her ex-husband who actually was arrested during the original investigation back in the 70s, but he was released without charge. So, you know, there, there's, it's a fascinating case. It's a gripping, gripping podcast. I hope, I hope listeners enjoy it. And at the heart of this, at the end of the day, is, you know, a, an amazing, wonderful woman who had her whole life ahead of her. And it was just so cruelly cut short her life. And it was so important for me to have her loved ones and family and friends, um, you know, be part of this podcast. So I tracked them down um, in my initial investigation in 2018. And I just thank them for being a part of this. Two episodes actually did go up of our initial podcast in March 2020. And it was actually on the day that the third episode was about to drop in the morning. Uh, the police actually went round to an address and made their first arrest in 42 years. And that's led to a conviction. And it's just the result that we could have only ever prayed mm. for. Right. Um, so just and it's, fantastic. And, it's, and it must be fascinating as well for you as a journalist to go into a story like this and because we don't, you know, we, I'm not going to make an apology as journalists, but, you know, we don't always get the chance to go as deep into things as, as we would like because of just the kind of news cycle being what it is. So it must have been quite satisfying to be able to spend as much time on it. Absolutely. Listeners can really get a feel of what it's like to be a journalist in the traditional sense, you know, actually going out and knocking doors and um, doing that, which I've always been passionate about, it led me to people that I would never have dreamt to have found. Obviously, it's such an old case. A lot of people that were involved in the original investigation and her loved ones, some of them are sadly, they've sadly passed away. So um, they'll really get a flavour of what it's like to be an on-the-road journalist. And yeah, it was just fascinating to me. It really was. Mm. And just so delighted that, you know, someone, her her killer has finally been held accountable yeah. and to share the journey you know it's, it was a journey full of twists and turns unraveling the truth and to be alongside her family um on that journey uh was just an incredible experience and obviously it was very bittersweet for them uh the conviction because at the end of the day no life sentence could ever bring brenda back mm. they've lived like sentence of not having her um and losing her at such a young age so very bittersweet yeah sure um Great to, to see you uh, today, Ruth. Uh, tell us where we can presumably get it at most of the normal podcast platforms. Yes, yes. So episodes one and two are out th today. They've been up since 5 a.m. this morning on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever you get your podcasts. Okay. Um, please be sure to rate and share them with your loved ones. And I just hope that you enjoy it.